I want to read something to you this morning. I was going to read Tuesday night, but uh, didn't have the opportunity. The Lord moved in, took over, and I got out of the way. Right, yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The kids shared. They had a list of things they were thankful for, each one of them, and they got up and shared that. Oh, my goodness. It was a blessing. Hallelujah. Yeah. It was just such a sweet spirit of thanksgiving in here, and it was really, really good. Amen. <laughs> I'll try to read some of it. Everyone in the village was very excited because of the news that had came down from the castle on the hill. All right. The king was going to keep a Thanksgiving day and he was going to ask one of the children in the village to join him for the feast, to sit at the table with the prince and the princess. It was rumored too <clears throat> that this child would be given good gifts by the king but it must be a very special kind of child indeed. That they all knew. The day before the day of Thanksgiving, the messenger of the king came down the hill from the castle to the little village in search of the child that would be invited. The first place that he went to was the house of the governor. Come on. It seemed like the most likely <clears throat> place to look. The governor's house was a tall castle and, or a tall house with huge pillars in front of it and it seemed like the logical place and they came to the door and they offered to him their little girl. She was dressed in silk and her hair was curled and the governor had packed a great hamper, a little basket full of sweets to send to the king. All right. Are you ready to keep the feast of the king? Would you like to? Asked the messenger. Oh yes, the governor's child said. I just knew you would pick me. I have on my best dress. I am the prettiest girl in town. I have plenty of sweets to offer to the king. Will you take me? But the messenger shook his head, for the child was not ready. Then the king's messenger went on till he found the house of the captain of the guards. Surely he would find the child he was looking for here. They opened the door, and the captain's little boy was quite sure that he would be chosen to go with the messenger. He wore a uniform, silver braid, and buttons like that which the guards wore. A sword hung at his side, and he wore a soldier's cap. Are you ready to keep the Thanksgiving feast with the king? The messenger asked. The little boy said, oh yes. I have my sword, and I can fight anyone that comes across our path on the way to the castle. Will you take me? But the messenger shook his head. The child was not ready. Then the king's messenger went on again. He came to the house of the baker, the baker's shop. And the baker's boy stood at the door, dressed in his best white suit, holding an empty basket on his arm. He was quite sure that he would be chosen to go to the palace, for his father's bake shop was an important place in the village. They measured their flour carefully. They weighed the loaves of bread that they might receive the most for their money each day as they sold the bread to the villagers. They very seldom had any crumbs left over for the poor, because they were so sure to take care of each and everything. The messenger asked, Are you ready to keep the Thanksgiving day with the king? The little boy said, Oh yes. I knew you would choose me. And I have this basket to gather up whatever remains that the king's feast has left over to bring them home to me and my family. Will you take me? But the messenger shook his head for the child was not ready. Then the messenger didn't know what to do next. He stood there outside the baker's <coughs> shop and wondered if there was a child, how he was going to find one, where would he look next. He went to the most prominent places in town. As he walked, he saw two children, a girl and a boy, coming toward him. They were poor children. And one was leading the other, for he was lame. The messenger looked at them. The little girl held her head high and smiled so bravely that no one would have even noticed her torn dress, her tattered jacket that she wore over that, and her dirty little face. <clears throat> the messenger stood in the road and the little girl walked up and spoke to him. 
The little girl looked up at the messenger with her face in surprise whenever he looked at her and said, Would you like to keep the feast with the king? Are you ready? The little girl looked up and said, Oh, no, sir. I couldn't go to the house of the king. I'm not ready. But this child that I bring to you is. You see, he is lame and he is hungry. Will you please take him? She asked. The messenger shook his head and said, Yes, and you too, for there is room at the king's table for you both. Amen. For this child was ready. Yes. She was more concerned about someone else than she Amen. was herself. Amen. Well, we've been preaching around here the last few weeks. We've been preaching about making a difference. Yes. We've been preaching about how you can make a difference. Amen. We've been preaching about how that Jesus said, You are the light of the world. Yes. Let your light so shine before men so that they'll see your good works and pat you on the back. No, no. that's not what it says. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. Oh, Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. There is a reason today to let your light shine. The church has lost sight of it. Come on. Amen. Come on. The church has lost sight yes. of the cause, the purpose, the mission yes. that Jesus handed yes. to us whenever He left this earth. Amen. When He turned to His disciples, yes. He said, Go into the world, all the world, and preach the gospel right. to every creature. Amen? Right. That was the mission. Amen. That was the cause. Yes. That was the reason that He left us here to be the light. Amen. To make a difference in other people's lives. Right. You might think, well, that little they, you know, that what big difference was that? Ask the little lame boy. Amen. Come on. Ask the person that you make a difference in their life and see how important it is to them. Amen. Amen. Right. Ask the person that is pulled from the burning house by the fireman that risked his life yeah. to make a difference mm -hmm. for the one person that was in there that would have died otherwise. Yeah. Ask that person Come how on. big of a difference that fireman made. Amen. Hey, I told you the last couple of weeks, ask D.L. Moody what kind of difference Edward Kimball made. And Come he'll on. tell you he made all the difference in the world to him. Amen. There's a reason. There's a cause. There's a mission. There is a goal today. That's right. And it's not to build fancier buildings. Come on. I know that's going to come as a shock to you out there. Right. And, and, and it's not to, to hang the best chandeliers from our ceilings. Come on. It's not even to fill our pews. That's become getting people saved hasn't become the goal. That's right. The goal has become filling the pews. Right. They don't care whether they're saved or not. Right. As long as they have somebody to warm the pew and put something in the offering plate. That's as far as their care goes is to get them inside the doors of the church. I have news for you. Coming to church don't save you. Right. There's as many lost people in the church as there is in the world. Oh, it's time the church caught sight of the vision that Jesus Christ, the commission that He gave to us and that is to make a difference in a lost and dying world. To allow your light to shine into the darkness of those that stumble around in a life full of pain and misery. Right. No Amen. hope and no peace. Yes, sir. And God needs somebody to stand up in these last days in the midst of a perverted and darkened world on, and say there's still a light. On, there's still hope, Brother Dave, to be yeah. found. On. There's still peace to be on. found. You will not find it in your fortress you have built with your millions sitting on your padded pew on. and listening to the best on, life you can have now. On, you will find it with someone offering you the gift that God gave to man. 2,000 years ago when he said here I'm going to give you my best he's going to save the world from their sins Amen. That's good preaching, brother. we need some people who still know what the cause is Lord bless them. Amen. we need some people who still have a vision right. for souls right, brother. today right. we've got people on the board that have a vision for a bigger building yeah. Absolutely. They have a vision for nicer carpet. Exactly. 
the finest of wood on the walls. Yeah. The finest of chandeliers and stained glass windows. Oh, say it. But no vision for souls that are lost and undone and dying and going to a devil's hell while the church sits in her place of comfortableness right. on her padded pew Come on. and don't care one way or the other That's what's right, going on. Brother, you got it. We find such a one that cared in 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, in the 20th, beginning of the 20th verse. 1 Samuel 17. And I start leaving my phone at home. And if here's with my speakers. 1 Samuel 17. Say, Brother Billy, what will happen if somebody calls you? Same thing that used to happen when we didn't have a phone in our pocket. Amen. Right. They have to wait like at home. Come on. We act like it's such an urgent thing. Yeah. We can't leave our phone outside there or can't turn it off. Yeah. Amen. Can't even put it on vibrate. Come on. Amen. Great in my mind need to get a hold of us. Well, we'll let them wait. God waits all, right. all week. Yes. Amen. For most people, God waits all week till you come to church to spend some time with Him. Let them wait till you get out of church. Amen. Amen. That's right. I don't know why I said that. That didn't cost you nothing. First Samuel 17 and 20. We find here, this is a story that is very familiar to you. We find that Israel, the battle has been set array against the Philistines. Israel on one side, the Philistines on the other. The only difference is the Philistines are making a lot of noise and the Israelites are hiding. All right. That sounds a little bit like the church today. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. The devil's crowd's making all the noise. Yeah, right. Amen. Yeah. And God's people are the ones that's hiding. Right. Amen. Right. The devil's people are the ones that's getting the laws passed mm -hmm. and the things instituted that's affecting us all while the church sits back and takes it. Well, that's where Israel was. You see, Israel had lost sight of the reason. They had lost sight of the cause. They had lost sight of the work. So they needed somebody to remind them. <laughs> oh, it wouldn't be the king. You know why? King was hiding in his tent, scared death. Amen. Come on. Scared. He was already on the toboggan slide downhill. All right. You know, from away from God. Yes. And we find a little boy. Uh, probably not a little boy as we <laughs> as we would think a little boy, but a young lad, nonetheless. Come on. The Bible says David rose up, and I'm in the 20th verse, 1 Samuel 17. Mm. And David rose up early in the morning, and he left the sheep with the keeper, and took and went as Jesse had commanded, that's his dad. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. He's cheering them on. Come Amen. On. Right. You'll find out in a minute they didn't have much, they didn't have much of uh, the battle as far as fighting it on their mind. Amen. Come on. They was too scared. Amen. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. Yeah. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. See, his brothers were down there. He was considered, I guess, too young, too small, too something. They left him behind. He wasn't old enough to be fighting with them, I guess. And Daddy had sent him down there with some sandwiches or what we would call sandwiches. Sent him down with some cheeses and some meats and said, go down there and take this to your brothers. They're down there fighting the battle. Yeah. Well, they wasn't actually fighting the battle, but I don't know how much of a hunger they were stirred up down hiding down in that foxhole. Amen? Yeah. And as he talked to them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, we'll call him the devil if you want to, oh. out of the armies of the Philistines, and he spake according to the same words, and David heard them. What words had he spoken? If you'll read the first part of this, you'll find out that the giant had been sticking his head up every day. Amen? Like clockwork. Amen. How many people know that the, the, the enemy, if he's not anything, he's punctual? Right. Amen? True. He is there to jump on your mind at the split second that you don't need him yes, to jump on your mind. Right. Amen? He has a schedule right. <laughs> Amen. that, 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 uh, that uh, pertains to you. Yes. So the enemy had been sticking up his head. He'd been walking out there and pounding his chest uh -huh. in front of all of God's army. Yeah. 
You able to say it? In front of all of God's army. He been he been he been doing like that guy over in Iran. Yeah. Amen. Walking out there pounding his chest. Right. And blowing off. Right. Amen. There's enemies of Israel still doing that today. Amen. Amen. In the natural. True. To wipe you off the face of the earth. Yeah. Amen. What he said. He's got another thing coming. Amen. Amen. Oh, if there's any wiping off the earth to be done, it ain't going to be the Israelites that get it done to them. Amen? True. So he's been walking out there and he's been challenging them and mocking them and making fun of their God. And David comes along and he hears the Goliath do what he had already been doing. Amen? Yeah. And all the men of Israel, when they saw him, listen, when they saw the man, verse 24, what they do? Fled from him. And we're sore afraid. Now, I don't know what the church's problem is today. I don't know if they're hiding because of fear. I don't know if just the spirit of complacency and compromise and economicalism that is taking over the church has just engulfed them and possessing their mind. But for some reason, the church is hiding from the devil. Amen. Amen. Didn't used to be like that. It used to be when a saint of God prayed up, oh, hallelujah, grandma walked into a room, the devil found the door to get out of. Right. Oh, that's that old saint of God. She's been praying all day. She's been, oh, my, my. She's been fasting this week. She's got a burden for somebody. Right. Well, he don't run from you. You know why? Oh, there's that old church door. Been watching General Hospital all day. Been watching One Life to Live all day. Been watching on the edge of night, on the edge of her seat, trying to find out who's pregnant, who ain't pregnant, who's been sleeping with who. He ain't scared of you because you ain't got enough God to make him scared. Come on, but Granny had enough God to make him scared. All right. Amen. True. Her hairstyle was the Granny Bun. Yeah. Her dress was one she made. I think her shoes were worn by pilgrims. Uh -huh. That's what they look like anyway. Come on. But she could make good biscuits. Right. And she could make your day. Amen. And she made the devil nervous every time she would pray. Right. Oh, see, that's what champions are made of. Amen. We think today our religious champion is the one in his $5,000 Armani suit that just sashayed from the beauty shop and has the best seller on the New York Times list. No, I tell you where you can find a champion. You'll find him or her in a prayer closet, in his prayer closet, down at the altar crying out to God. Hair's messed up. Clothes might have came from the goodwill. Oh, but they got a relationship with God. Oh, they still call out on the name of the Lord and they still got power with God. Amen, bro. Amen. Church of the day don't have enough power to swat a fly, let alone kill a devil. Come on, bro. Amen. I don't like you, Brother Billy. Well, I've got the same answer for you that Paul had for the church of Galatians. Will you, am I become your enemy because I preach you the truth? Amen. That's what Paul said yeah. to the church of Galatia whenever he looked at him and said, what did he tell them? Foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the word of God, the truth. Amen. Church of today, foolish, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the word of God? Who has bewitched you into believing? That the reason we're here is to build some kind of earthly kingdom and some kind of religious fortress. Mm. Amen. Come on. The reason we're here is because of those out there. Yes. The ones that are lost, undone, right. dying and hurting. Amen. And we find here a little lad that's about to remind them there is a cause. There is a purpose. There is a work. Amen. See, David heard him. Mm. And all of Israel, the men of Israel, they heard him. And when they saw Goliath, yeah. They fled. Amen. They ran. Brothers, at least they were afraid. Right. Amen. Come on. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen? I'm in verse 25. Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. <clears throat> and David spake to the men that stood by, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this? Now listen to this. This is the first time anybody's spoken out, at least the Bible records anyway. Mm -hmm. Who is the rest of them running in fear, scared of him, 
saying, have you seen this man? Come on. Have you seen this devil? That's where they'll act to you. Yeah. Have you seen what this enemy can do? Come on. David's answer to them was, yet, yeah, have you seen my God? Right. <laughs> oh, I feel good this morning. Amen. Hell, you may wish I still laid up somewhere with a heat pad on my back. I feel good this morning. They said, have you seen this giant? David said, have you seen my God? Hallelujah. We need some people to stand in the pulpit. We need some people to get on the radio. We need some people to take over the Christian stations that will stand there and say, hey, have you seen my God? Hallelujah. Oh, Amen. He's bigger than any giant you'll face. Yes, sir. He's bigger than any mountain you'll face. Right. He's bigger than any problem. Come on. He is God. Yes, sir. Besides Him, ain't nobody else has oh, written that verse. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell Listen to this. Men of Israel said, have you seen this man? Mm. He's come out to defy the army of Israel. Yeah. Verse 26, David, said, David spake to the men that stood by and said, what shall be done? For the one that takes him down. Yeah. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Amen. Oh. See, we ain't talking about just a normal army. Right. We're not talking about just some normal people. Right. We're talking about a royal priesthood. Come on. A holy nation. Yeah. Uh, the Hollywood church of today has made us a laughing stock. Yes, sir. Amen. True. We're supposed to stand head and shoulders above the crowd. Amen. Exactly. Not to look down on them, but to tell them, hey, Jesus loves you. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. Yeah. He's the only way to be set free. Amen. Absolutely. Oh. He is the answer. We come down on the world's level uh -huh. to win the world. Right. And we just stayed there. Amen. Amen. That's true. They brought in the rock music right. to win the rock crowd. Yes. Amen. They brought in their strobe lights and their fancy smoke right. to win those that like to go to a rock concert. Amen. And somewhere in the midst of all of that mess, yeah. and it is mess. Yes. Amen. They lost sight of the real goal. Yeah. The real reason is not how much money you have in your offering plate. Come on. Listen, I don't know how much money we have in the offering plate this morning. I'm thankful for it. Amen. God continues to provide. Yes. I'm thankful for all of you that give. Amen. Amen. If the devil told you I ain't, remember, you can tell he's lying when he's moving his lips. Yes, sir. But my goal this morning is not to fill this offering plate. All right. Amen. My goal is to tell somebody somewhere yeah. about Jesus. Amen. My goal is to get you stirred up enough. Mm -hmm. That when you walk out of these doors on Sunday morning, right. you don't leave your religion here till you get back next week. Amen. My goal is that you will go out and be the light that you are supposed to be in a world of darkness. Come on, brother. David's fixing to ask them a question that I'd like to pose to the world today. Good preaching. And the people answered him in this manner, mm -hmm. saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. Yeah. Now listen to what his brothers do. Verse 28, 1 Samuel 17. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. See, he heard him call this Philistine, this uncircumcised Philistine, who is he that should defy the armies of the living God? Yeah. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled. See, you don't just have the world that gets mad at you when you preach the truth. You have the church. Right. Amen? True. His brother's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why camest thou down hither? Yeah. And with whom hast thou left the few sheep? Now, I want you to, I want you to miss that. Amen. Hast left those few sheep in the wilderness. In other words, you ain't even capable of watching a bunch of sheep. All we can trust you with is a few. Now trust me, David's flock was not a few, but this is the way his brother had of putting him down. Can't nobody belittle you like a saint of God. Well, right. I'll put that in quotation marks. Amen. Can't nobody belittle you like a hypocrite. Right. Amen. Maybe I should put it like that. Can't nobody look down their nose at you like somebody that's got that old religious demon on them and they think they are it in a bag of chips, Brother Sleeves. Amen. They think they are it. Come 
Come on, brother. They make you feel small. Come on, tell it. And sometimes I think they get joy out of making you feel small. Making you feel dirtier than they are. Yeah. Making you feel not as holy as they are. Oh, tell it. Well, I got news for you. When you walk away from them, do that praying for them, but don't walk away feeling bad and thinking that you ain't as well off as they are because apparently they're worse off than you. Come on, Amen. Brother, yeah. Come on, oh, Eliab was in a bad shape. He said, Blessing. What are you doing down here? Who's watching them few sheep you got up yonder in the pasture? Uh -huh. Up yonder in the wilderness? Yeah. I know your pride. He tells him, I know thy pride. And the naughtiness of thine heart. Mm -hmm. For thou art coming, must have knew his relationship with the Lord. Yeah. And the naughtiness of thine heart. And now he's nitpicking at him. He said, What are you doing down here? What are you talking to us like that for? For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. That's the only reason you're down here. He'd come down there to bring them some food. Yeah. His daddy's sitting down there. Right. But his brother says, I know what you come down here for. You just came down here to see the battle. Yeah. Truth be told, now David's glad he's here now because he's the, he's the man God sent. Yeah. But truth be told, he'd have rather been up there in the wilderness with them stinky sheep. Right. Writing his psalms and singing praises to God. Then he wouldn't have been down there with that bunch of chickens. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Amen. Yes, sir. Then he wouldn't have been down there with them. But they're saying, we know what you came down here for. You just came down here to stir up trouble. Right. You just came down here to stand by and see the battle. Right. And David says to him these words in verse 29. And David said, what have I now done? Mm. That makes it sound like, mm. he's saying like we do, what have I done now? Yeah. So they must have picked on him pretty good. Right. What have I done now? Amen. Oh, my goodness. Then he asked this question. At the end of verse 29, is there not a cause? Come on. That's the question I have for the church today. Is there not a mission? <laughs> the church, the church are on a mission. I mean, they're always want, they want to build big Christian amusement parks. Right. They want to build a big recreation hall so they have a place to play basketball. Come on. Amen. Come on. I ain't never heard any of those places causing a revival to break out. Oh, really? Right. Amen. Yeah. I've never heard of it. The, the revivals, you search back through history and find out how revivals became. How fire started. It started with people... It started with people, oh my Lord, and it started with people that were seeking the face of a living God and crying out in an old fashioned altar, God stir us, move in our lives, help us be the light we're supposed to be. Amen. You ain't never going to start a revival with your chandeliers. That's right. You ain't never going to start a revival with your fancy fortress you've been building on. Right. You, ain't, you know what gets my goat? Older I get to more of those old sayings I use. But you know what gets my goat? Is churches that allow their board to stop the outreach that they have going, whether it be by radio, whether it, maybe, maybe it's a newsletter, maybe it's however it is they're reaching out. There's a lot of ways you can reach out right. beyond your four walls to people right. out there. Amen. Mostly what I speak of is radio because I've been in radio for nearly 20 years. Yeah. But the board will vote that there's something better they can do with that money. Amen. What, are you crazy? <laughs> what is there better than to reach out to those that you're not reaching? Yeah. To reach out beyond your four walls. True. Amen. You can build the nicest building that you want. Right. It ain't going to get you there. Amen. It ain't going to get nobody else there. Right. Amen. Come on. Oh, my, my, my. I'd rather have I'd rather have church in a two-seater outhouse and have a vision for souls than I would to settle my pew inside my fancy fortress that's worth whatever much dollars and let the world go to hell. All right. Amen. I've said this before, I said this morning. This church is small, but give me a broom closet in the Spirit of God over a big empty dead building any day. Come on. Amen. Right. David stands up in the midst of the battle. We're in a battle, church. Yes, we're in a battle not only for the for the 
morals of this nation. Not only for, for the, the laws that are being chased. We're in a battle for souls that hang in the balance. The devil's pulling them one way and we're supposed to pull them out of the fire. Amen? Listen, whether you know it or not, many of your family members are beginning to feel the heat. That's how close they are to hell. Amen? And it's time for us to quit going along with the flow. Hiding in the foxhole and deciding, hey, there is a cause today. There is a work that needs to be done. Amen. There's a work that needs to be done today. Yes, sir. Amen. There's a greater cause than your building. Amen. There's a greater cause than your new carpet. That's right. I don't have anything against that stuff. Amen. But I do if it causes you to lose your vision. Yes, sir. If you think that we're going to stop our radio outreach and our newsletters and our CDs and our tapes and our videos and our internet outreach, if you think we're going to stop all that so that we can have nicer pews, you're crazy. All right. If you... <clears throat> listen. Come on, say it. We got this letter this week from India. Now you're more than free. Anybody wants to read it and read it after service. I want you to look where they worship. That's a picture they sent to us. Do you, do you see any chandeliers? I don't even see no paneling. Do you see any carpet? I'm not sure. That, that don't look like carpet to me. You see anything fancy? No. But in the day that we live in America, we can't worship God unless the air conditioner is on. All right. yeah. We can't worship God unless our favorite song leader is there. We can't worship God unless we have live music. Right. Amen. We had a preacher here sometime back now. I can say yes now. Maybe he's forgot he said it. He said he'd never been in the church before and didn't have a keyboard. Yeah. I'm sure he didn't mean it the way it sounded. Yeah. But it didn't sound too uplifting to me. <laughs> Amen. Right. I've been in a lot of churches that had a keyboard. Didn't have an ounce of Spirit of God in them either. Amen. Right. I don't have nothing against the keyboard. I wish we had a full band up here this morning. Right. But I don't see no instruments there. They might have some tambourines or something. Yeah. But I don't I don't see any instruments there. Amen. And they wrote to us telling us how much they appreciate us. Tell him what an inspiration that we are to them. Praise Lord. Amen. Praise God. Telling us how much they depend on our prayers. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Telling us that they get together. The ministers once a month get together, get together there. And guess who they pray for? Us. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. You see, they are some of the reason. The man that writes to us sitting in prison. And tells us that he sits there waiting for the newsletter. That he sits there waiting for the radio broadcast every Sunday. Yeah. He's part of the reason. All right. Amen. The little elderly lady that's homebound in her wheelchair. Yeah. That sits there at her computer at her desk and watches the interstate as traffic goes by. And listens to Voice of the Lord Radio 24-7 being fed by the ministries and the, and the music. Right. She's one of the reasons. We've lost sight of them. Amen. We've lost sight of the reason today. Right. We've lost sight of the purpose. We have it. The church as a whole has. Right. Amen. I tell you this because we send out over 100 newsletters a month. Very few of them send anything in. Why? Because they don't realize the calls. Now some of them may not have it. I ain't talking about them. Yeah. When I prayed over the offering this morning, you heard me ask God to bless those that have. Bless those that don't have. Right. I didn't say, Lord, bless those that don't give. Come on. Big difference in you not having and you having and not giving. Right. Amen. True. Big difference in that. Y'all look like y'all freezing to death. <laughs> Big difference in that. Amen. Come on. But these people are some of the these these people are part of the cause. Uh, Amen. Yeah. We lost sight of that, brother. That's David. right. Amen. Amen. True. If listen. If you want a preacher that's going to preach on top of a building to get 100 people in Sunday school, you've got the wrong preacher. All right. 
If you want a preacher that's going to get behind the church in a big building drive fund so that we can... I'd like to have a nicer building and the Lord will provide that if that's what He wants. Amen? Amen. He'll lead us in that direction, but you following the wrong man. And when I printed out my notes this morning and I wrote board, you know, the church board, uh -huh. I spelled it B-O-R-E-D. Now, I know that's not how you spell the actual board of a church. Yeah. <clears throat> But I spelled it that way so I would remember to tell you this. One of the reasons the board decides they can do better things with the money is because they're bored with what you're doing. Right. See, you've got to have something exciting going on to draw the people in, brothers, please. Yeah. Amen? Yeah, if we got to have a gong show to draw in the crowd, we'd just be gone. Amen. Amen? Amen. If we have to have the special lights and the rock music to get you in here, we just ain't going to be able to reach you. Amen? Amen? Because when I meet them out on the street, I don't offer them rock music. Right. I don't offer them strobe lights. Right. I don't offer them entertainment. Right. I say, hey, do you know my Jesus? You don't have to live in pain and misery. He's the life giver, the hope giver, the peace giver. Come on, preach. Because they're the reason that we're here. Yes, sir. Amen. He didn't leave us here to build no kingdom. He didn't leave us here to build no multi-million dollar ministry facility with a $15,000 desk and a $23,000 commode. Amen. I wouldn't send them a dime. If they're taking your money and spending it on that, it is clear to me they have done lost view of what's important. They done lost their vision. And where there is no vision, the people perish. But Brother Billy... Their crowds are growing. It's a crowd that crucified Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Don't brag to me about your crowd. Don't brag to me about your crowd. The crowd Brilliant. killed Jesus. Amen. You got it. Popular opinion. Huh. Well, that, those old-fashioned morals not popular anymore. Right. They're acting like they're saying that America is going more toward the what, the left. Yeah. Going more toward the liberal side. All right. Going more toward approving abortion. And approving homosexuality and approving the loose living. Will God help us? Yes. Amen. Amen. Because we've lost sight Amen. of what's important. True. The church has lost sight of what's important. Yeah. The people of Israel had <clears throat> lost sight of what was important. Mm -hmm. And David had to remind them that there was a cause. Amen. Come on. There was a cause. Uh -huh. He said, Is there not a cause? And he turned him toward another. And he spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again yeah. after this former matter. So David, when his brother said, what are you doing? You See, the devil liked to get you in an argument with somebody. Amen. Amen. Right. All David did was look at his brother. He could have argued with him. You know how brothers do. Right. Amen. Cool. Me and Rod's had some arguments. He's the closest thing that I've got to a brother. Amen. All right. My sisters, we argued quite a bit, especially me and Carolyn. Amen. We was closer in, in age, so we argued, and now we right. now we joked each other about how mean we was to one another. But David could have stood there and argued all day long, but there was more important business. Yes, sir. But the least there's more important business than me arguing with you. Right. If you're looking for somebody to argue with, you come to the wrong preacher. Right. I ain't gonna let souls die and go to hell while I argue with you about doctrine. Come on, come on, say it. Amen. Truth. I'm not gonna let souls die and go to hell while I argue with you about everything you want to nitpick at. Amen. True. Thank God I still have a vision. Right. I want you to have that vision. Amen. I believe that many of you out there today do have that vision. Yeah. But I believe we need more people standing up and saying, is there not a cause? Oh. Is it the word cause there in the Hebrew means a variety of things, but I want to read a few of them to you, and I'm trying yeah. to close. It means is there not a matter? Is there not business? to be taken care of. <laughs> oh, and he ain't talking about the business meeting. Amen. He's talking about this uncircumcised Philistine that dares to defy the army of the living God. Right. We got to take care of business, boys. Amen. Quit hiding in the foxhole. Yeah. Go out and face the giant. Come on. Is there not a promise? Is there not a cause? Is there not a reason? Is there not a task? Mm -hmm. Is there not a work to be done? Is there not a mission? Oh, I love that one right there. Is there not a mission today? There's a mission. There is a cause. There is a reason. Amen. True. And it's not to build fancier buildings. Right. It's not to build the recreation hall. I'd like to have a nicer building. A bigger one maybe. 
I don't see anything wrong with the niceness part of it. Amen. I'd like to have a big fellowship hall yeah. where we wouldn't have to try to find somewhere to have our homecomings. Right. But that's not at the top of my list. All right. If we had a board at the top of my list, if they cared to hear what I had to say, many times the board don't care what the pastor has to say about it. Yeah. And the pastor just goes right along with whatever because he's afraid he'll lose his job. Mm. If you follow the board instead of the Spirit, you've done lost your job. Amen. That's true. Amen. You don't you done quit on headquarters. Right. But at the top of my list would be some of these people here. Mm. <clears throat> would be the man in prison. Would be the elderly lady. Right. Would be the 85-year-old man that we received a letter from sometime back that received the Lord while reading the newsletter. Right. The elderly man out in New Jersey that wrote us and said he sits there waiting for the broadcast to come on. Yeah. Those people are on top of my list. Amen. I'm not worried about impressing the mayor. All right. Never have been. Yeah. When we did street meetings, we weren't worried about impressing the mayor. All right. We we wanted to make sure we wasn't so loudly locked us up to keep us from preaching to the people, but yeah. they would come and tell us to turn it down, or the people would turn it down, they would leave, we would turn it back up. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. The same people that complain about the noise we make for Jesus are the same people that's out there at the boot scoot and dance. Yeah. They got their big speakers pumping out the country music. Yeah, right. They got the fireworks. They got the boat races. Right. Nobody complains. Uh -huh. They ready to dance with you. Yeah. But you go to shine a light into their comfortable place of darkness, that's when they get uncomfortable. Right. Not worried about pleasing all that crowd. Bomb. Just worried about taking Jesus to the lost. Amen. 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 Not worried about pleasing the Lord. Thank Amen. God. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Almost stepped into that a time or two. Thank God He shut the door. All right. Amen. What you need to do with your board? You need to dismiss them right. for good. And find an old-fashioned altar. Amen. And ask the Spirit of God to lead you in the direction He'd have your church to go. Right. Amen. You might not have the pews filled, but you'll be reaching those that are here. Yes, sir. You'll be reaching more than just that's inside your four walls. Amen. I got about five more pages of notes. So unless the Lord changes our direction, because we've got some want to look at Jesus. Amen. And a situation that He yes. gives us a great example of in the Word of God that goes right along with this. I want you to write down today Galatians, the fourth chapter, the 16th verse as we close. You don't have to go there. You can if you want to, of course, but write that down. The Apostle Paul, and I quote, tried to quote this to you a while ago, speaking to the church of Galatia. If you tuned in today and you didn't get the sermon you wanted, if you didn't hear what you wanted to hear, if you got mad because of what you did hear, if you decided, and we've had people write us and tell us they will no longer give to this ministry, because we stand for certain things or because we preach certain things. If you feel that way today, I ask you the same question that Paul asked the church of Galatia in the 4th chapter, the 16th verse, and he did this because he loved them. Galatians 4, 16, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Amen. Praise God. Do you hate me because of the truth? Mm -hmm. Have you declared me as your enemy because of the truth that I preach to you? Well, hopefully the Lord and the Spirit will change your mind on that. Amen. Because we're praying for you. Yes. I tell them all this all the time on the radio. You're the reason that we're doing this. Right. You're the reason that we're here. It's certainly not because we've drawn in the money. But it's been, and the Lord has opened doors. My goodness. Don't, and, and we'll find out when we get to glory how many people we've reached. Amen. But God has continued to open doors and He continues to do so. And it's my prayer that He gives us more finances so that we can walk through more doors that He opens. All right. I've had other people contact us and say they want us on the radio station, but of course they have to charge us for airtime. Yeah. Amen. And I'm not going to start to build a house if we don't have the money to cover it unless the Lord says, step out and do this. Right. But right now, we're on the radio stations and we're sending them like we're supposed to send them and God's moving and we're on some radio stations that 
just air us because God opened that door and they don't charge us a dime. Praise the Lord. Hey, isn't that God? Yeah. Amen. That's it. Some of them we have to pay. Uh -huh. Some of them we don't. Had a radio station up in Virginia, and this we hear we hear a lot of feedback from those folks up there. They contacted us a year and a half ago and said, we want to air your radio program. And I said, well, how much are you going to charge us? And they said, we ain't going to charge you nothing. Praise the Lord. Right. Two different stations. They're both on AM, and you might think, AM radio, yeah, but there's a lot of people that in their area, the only gospel they can get is on AM radio. That's right. Amen. Right. So y'all pray that God will open more doors so that Amen. we can walk through them. Amen. Y'all right. pray that God sends us more partners so that we can continue to do what God wants to do. And these people here asked that if we would please write them soon. Mm -hmm. So we're going to write them. And if you if you have a card you want to put in there, let them know you're praying for them or just say hello or whatever you want. Bring that next Sunday. We're going to get that together and send it to them and ask them to keep us in prayer and let them know we're praying for them. Because there is a cause this morning. Yes. There's a purpose. There is a reason that we're here. Yes. It's your neighbors, Brother Dave. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. It's the people you work with, right. Brother Sleece. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's the people that you come in contact every, wow. with every day that don't know Jesus. They're the reason that you're here. They are part of the cause. They are part of the mission yeah. for you to shine your light. It, not to belittle them, not to make them feel bad, but to offer them the greatest gift ever given to mankind. Yeah. You got it, now share it. Amen. You are the light, now go out the door and be the light that you're supposed to be. Amen? Amen. Shine your light into the darkness. Let your light so shine before men so that they will see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Because you know who gets glorified if they see your bad works? The devil. The devil. Amen? Right. And I'm afraid he's getting more glory from the church than God is. Uh, Amen. Tell it. But let's try this week to let our light shine. Let's try this week to be a witness. Right. Let's try this week. You see, in that scripture, it didn't even talk about you going up to them and even discussing something or, or opening the conversation. It says so that they will see your good works. They should be able to see Jesus living through you. Amen. Amen. That's and if right. they can't, it's time to get your light out from under the bushel. Yes, sir. Trim the wick and get it burning again. That's right. Let your light shine before Amen. me. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Praise Someone else this morning have something before we